Something important just happened at sea, and it didn't arrive with loud announcements or dramatic reveals. China's new J-35 aircraft has moved from theory into real-world carrier operations, launched from a next-generation ship built for a very different kind of aviation future. This video explores how that happened, why it matters now, and what this shift reveals about how carrier aviation itself is quietly changing. The most important part of this story is not the aircraft itself, but the platform that makes it possible. China's newest aircraft carrier, Fujian, represents a clear break from the country's earlier approach to carrier operations. Unlike previous vessels that relied on angled ramps and limited launch methods, Fujian is designed around electromagnetic launch systems, allowing aircraft to take off with heavier fuel loads and greater flexibility in configuration. This matters because the launch method determines capability. A carrier that can only send aircraft into the air with reduced weight limits is constrained in how far those aircraft can fly how long they can remain airborne, and what systems they can carry. By contrast, electromagnetic launch technology allows for smoother acceleration, finer control, and compatibility with a wider range of aircraft types. Recent publicly released footage and satellite analysis confirm that Fujin has begun structured launch and recovery activities involving multiple aircraft types, not just one-off demonstrations. What makes this especially notable is the timing. Fujin entered sea trials only recently, yet the pace of visible activity suggests a focused effort to move quickly from testing to operational familiarity. Carrier aviation is among the most complex forms of aviation in existence, requiring coordination between deck crews, pilots, sensors, and ship systems. Progress in this area cannot be improvised. It reflects long-term planning and extensive preparation behind the scenes. Another key element is system integration. Fujian is not designed to operate a single type of aircraft in isolation. Its deck layout, hangar space, and launch systems indicate preparation for an air wing that includes fixed-wing radar aircraft, support platforms, and next-generation jets. This integrated approach is what transforms a large ship into a functional aviation hub rather than a symbolic platform. For years, analysts viewed China's carrier program as incremental and experimental. Fujin challenges that assumption. It is designed not as a stepping stone, but as a foundation for future growth. By enabling heavier aircraft launches, faster sortie cycles, and broader mission flexibility, it creates the conditions necessary for more advanced aviation concepts to function at sea. This shift sets the stage for the J-35. Without Fujin, the aircraft would remain an interesting design exercise. With Fujin, it becomes part of a system that changes how naval aviation can be practiced. With the carrier context established, the J-35 itself becomes easier to understand. This aircraft is not simply a modified land-based design. It reflects deliberate choices aimed at sustained carrier use, visible in both its structure and configuration. Public imagery and official descriptions show a platform built with folding wings for deck efficiency reinforced landing gear for repeated recoveries, and a nose gear arrangement consistent with electromagnetic launch systems. One of the most discussed aspects of the J-35 is its low observability design, but it is important to frame this realistically. Rather than focusing on absolute claims, the more relevant point is that the aircraft is shaped to reduce detection range, giving it greater flexibility in how and when it operates. In carrier aviation, even modest reductions in visibility can significantly affect planning, spacing, and timing. The aircraft's twin-engine configuration is another notable choice. Operating over open water places a premium on reliability, and dual engines provide additional safety margins. They also support higher takeoff weights, which align with Fujin's launch capabilities. Reports indicate that the J-35 is designed to carry its primary payload internally, preserving aerodynamic efficiency while maintaining a clean external profile during most operations. Range and endurance are also central to the design philosophy. While exact figures remain subject to debate, available data suggests a focus on extended operational reach rather than short-range performance. This aligns with the broader goal of operating further from the carrier while remaining connected to its support network. Equally important is production intent. The article you shared emphasizes that the J-35 is not expected to remain a low-quantity platform. Plans discussed in open sources point toward gradual scaling, 
with initial deployments followed by larger numbers in the coming decade. This matters because aviation capability is not defined by individual aircraft, but by the ability to maintain presence, rotate crews, and sustain activity over time. It is also worth noting what the J-35 is not. It is not presented as a radical departure from known aviation principles, nor as a single leap ahead of all existing designs. Instead, it represents a careful blending of established concepts with newer technologies, optimized specifically for carrier use. To understand why this development matters, it helps to step back from individual platforms and look at the pattern emerging. The combination of a modern launch-capable carrier and a purpose-built aircraft signals a move towards sustained, predictable aviation operations at sea. This is less about showcasing technology and more about building reliability. One major implication is reach. When aircraft can launch with full fuel and optimized configurations, they can operate at greater distances without depending heavily on immediate support. This expands the effective operating area of the carrier itself, allowing it to remain farther from congested zones while still supporting aerial activity. Another implication is tempo. Efficient launch and recovery systems reduce wear on both aircraft and crews. Over time, this translates into higher sortie rates and smoother scheduling. These factors are rarely visible in promotional material, but they define how useful an aviation platform truly is. There is also an element of signaling through presence. Operating advanced aircraft from a modern carrier sends a message of technological maturity without requiring dramatic gestures. It shows that systems are being tested, refined, and normalized. That quiet normalization often has more impact than bold announcements. From an industry and innovation perspective, this development reflects how long-term investment shapes outcomes. Carrier aviation requires coordination across shipbuilding, aerospace engineering, training, logistics, and command systems. The J-35 and Fujin combination illustrates what happens when those elements mature together rather than in isolation. It also influences how other aviation programs are evaluated. As more navies explore advanced carrier concepts, the emphasis may shift from headline specifications to integration, sustainability, and adaptability. In that sense, this development contributes to a broader conversation about what modern carrier aviation should prioritize. Finally, there is a lesson here about systems thinking. No aircraft operates alone. Its effectiveness depends on launch technology, crew proficiency, maintenance cycles, and the surrounding network of support platforms. The real story is not the jet or the ship, but the ecosystem forming around them. That ecosystem is still evolving, but its direction is now clear. And once such systems enter regular operation, they tend to shape planning and expectations for years to come. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you there.